Well, your son War is a very dangerous person. He is a very brutal. Uh, he's very extreme uh, ideologically, and he also a very violent person in his in his features, in his personality. He actually um, killed himself. Uh, people. He, uh, he also um, known to be one is was torturing uh, Palestinians who were uh, suspected to be collaborators. Uh, Sinwar was uh, imprisoned in Israel. In fact. Uh, uh, Israel saved his life because he had a brain tumor, a very dangerous and and and, and violent uh, brain tumor. And Israel basically um, conducted an operation saving his life when he was imprisoned in Israel. Do you think it was a mistake to release him? Well, it was part of the uh, deal to be, bring back the uh, Israeli soldier, Gilad Shalit, and that was a part of the payment that Israel had to pay. The world would be a better place without somebody like Hesinwa in it in this place. I hope that uh, it will end this war in one of the two or one of the three ways. One that he's going to be killed by Israel or kept, um, you know, catched by Israel and being brought to justice, or maybe he will be killed by its own people. Is this a, a possibility that he will be killed by uh, his own people? Sinwar and uh, like other members of Hamas uh, brought disaster on Gaza Strip. There are many people in Gaza Strip before the war that didn't like Hamas because Hamas is a brutal organization. He murdered hundreds and hundreds of Palestinians and so on. It's a possibility. I mean, I'm sure there will be enough people in Gaza Strip that will be happy uh, personally to kill Sinwar and to kill other Hamas members. Mr. Melamed, you said in an interview that you would not rush to send troops into the Hamas tunnels. Why would be that a mistake? Look, this whole uh, challenge of tunnels is a serious tunnels. Uh, we are talking about long, narrow tunnels that have many layers. Um, some of the tunnels are probably um, uh, booby-trapped with explosives. Um, there is there is a need to exercise cautious when you deal with this challenge of tunnels. So there are different ways and means, technological and other means, uh, military means, to, to deal with this challenge of tunnels. And you don't have necessarily to start sending uh, Israeli soldiers to those tunnels uh, because the, 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 the death toll would be very high. It could be very dangerous for Israeli soldiers. The tunnels have uh, different... Uh, I would say Achilles heels, like for example, the fact that they need to be ventilized all the time. You must have a flow of oxygen to the tunnels, otherwise you will be suffocated. Um, if Israel could reach the generators that generate this oxygen, then anyone who is in the tunnel is going to be cut off the oxygen supply, and then he either going to be suffocated in the tunnels or have to leave the tunnels and walk, walk out to the surface. Every tunnel, in the end of the day, the tunnels must have an exit, an entrance. And if you have the ability in a slow, gradual, but very uh, uh, organized and structured way to reach to those exit and entrances of the tunnels, you actually can block the tunnels. And once again, everyone who is inside, and it's estimated that many, if not most, of Hamas and Islamic Jihad militants are hiding in those tunnels, Mr. Mohamed, uh, what do you think uh, the political future of uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will be after this war? I don't know what to say. I mean, the, the, clearly there is an expectation within, I would say, wide circles, maybe majority of the Israeli public, that Mr. Netanyahu will uh, resign, will take responsibility and will step down. Um, to the best of my understanding, this is something that up until now, Mr. Netanyahu um, didn't show that he is willing or planning to do that.